For those of you who haven't seen the previous episode, I would recommend to go do that. Uh, it involves uh, me getting mauled by a bear who killed two bandits that I saw two miles away before I even found it. So, this episode we're going to go bandit hunting. I found out where uh, one of the bandit camps is <clears throat> via the rumor system, which is a new system I did not know existed. Essentially, there's a button uh, where you can ask an NPC if they know anything new or out of the ordinary near the area, and they uh, they just put a dot on the map for you to go look at. And, uh, yes, so we're going to go kill, uh, bandits. Uh, we're going to hunt bandits. Uh, mostly because, uh, our current stance, it would actually be really good for XP and money. Moderate money. To my knowledge, you don't get money for killing bandits besides the pocket chains they add on them when you kill them. But, uh, so, yeah, I uh, did some research on the game uh, before I started this episode. Parent, I mean, like I was saying, the rumor system uh, and the basic mechanics how it works. Sometimes they will tell you a, a place of interest, which would have its own self-enclosed quest line, like a dungeon or whatever. But if you keep following the rumor chains, you know some rumors can actually chain together and produce a unique artifact which you can only get uh, by fulfilling the rumor. For example, if you uh, find a hear about a rumor about bandits camp, a bandit camp, you go there kill all the bandits, they might have a good stolen artifact you can sell for good money. Oh, and the other reason? Uh, apparently, uh, bandits have a chance of dropping uh, cleavers, battle cleavers, uh, and uh, we have a quest for that. So, we're going to hunt bandits. Uh, Dad and I also keep bringing off the hide of animals because uh, this character I've decided not to allow the use of bows just to see how far we can get in the entire game without using the bow. Alrighty, I did a little cut there. And, uh, yeah, so, bandits. We're looking for bandits. Ooh, yeah, that, uh, that looks bad. Here we go. He's playing. Uh, let's put some medicine on that. 
luckily on my way here I picked up an inventory full of medicine. And I forgot to sell my old wooden staff. Come back here. There's bounties on your heads. I'm not going to let you walk off that easy. Come on. Yep. There we go. You had a spiked club. I'm going to sell a lot of these wooden items to uh, the woodsmith. Uh, and one of the reasons why... Uh, is he will buy wooden tools and the like, but each vendor has a uh, diminishing returns vector. You know, if you keep selling him wooden tools, he's eventually going to have more than he could ever use. And he uses most of them for firewood. He just removes uh, all the metal bits added to it and then resells it as firewood. Let's rest here for a little bit. Let's eat some uh, floor food. Don't want to eat that ham. But uh, something I did notice, uh, in between episodes there is an update, and the update appears to have actually debuffed forest, I know, mean, uh, floor food from the forest. Berries and mushrooms and the like, you just can't roast them. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so I, uh, I will mitigate that by just buying, uh, more ham. Or I should, uh... I wonder if there is a crafting recipe for cured meats in this game. Because if there is, that actually might be a really good way to get, well, meat. Hunt a, a shitload of animals. Uh, hang it, I know, like uh, the Native Americans, uh, who the American government during the Civil War and uh, during the 1800s era entirely. Uh, they actually relied on this one specific group of Native Americans uh, to make pemmican. And they actually patented pemmican or were actually the first Native Americans to file a patent and the U.S. government actually protected them because they were the only ones who knew how to make pemmican. And the reason why pemmican is so good... So yeah, uh, the reason why pemmican was so good uh, for ancient peoples of that era is really big. Uh, pemmican was a secret mixture of uh, dried meats, tallow, and dried berries. sealed within a rawhide bag made of the pelt 
of the animal that made the pemmican. <clears throat> and uh, the thing is, without berries, pemmican can actually last upwards of a year. Minimum. It can last a year minimum, but if you keep it stored correctly, uh, the correct temperature, I mean, uh, pretty much just ambient temperature, no sun, no direct sunlight, and a dry place. So pretty much like every, <clears throat> every uh, item in your cupboard. Just a cool, damp, and a, and a cool, dry place. Either looking about uh, upwards of a hundred years, and that's if the rodents didn't get it. A ration that could last one hundred years before the advent of canning. Now, that's useful. So let's burn him. Come on. There we go. Come on, come on, David. Now, uh, from how I understand it, uh, the more you use a weapon, the more proficient you get at it in this game, similar to Kenshi. And uh, different uh, characters start off with different weapons and the like. And the reasoning is character backstory, essentially. And if you don't use a weapon they're proficient in uh, early in the game, as seen in the previous episode, uh, you're not going to have a fun time. We're talking about instant death. Let's move some things here. Eat those berries. I'm also learning that uh, herbs, herbs are okay to sell, especially if you find an open field without any enemies nearby. That'll get you some income, but uh, so far from what I'm seeing, this uh, uh, bandit killing is far, far uh, faster. When it comes to money. And apparently uh, the most uh, profitable uh, adventure you can have in this game is Grizzly Cheesy. Uh, I actually heard of this on a little guide. Uh, in between episodes, I like to look at uh, bits of the game. The first episode was completely blind, but episode two, I know enough of the uh, game from the first game where there isn't that much you can spoil. You know, pretty much uh, this game is travel, item management, uh, 
money management, and uh, just travel and exploring. There we go. And next volume, you should be cooked. I'm a little hungies. Yeah, uh, I kind of have a feeling that all melee weapons are going to be, uh, play uh, about the same. You know, you have different abilities and passives and the like, and different ways how they intermesh with other things and how they play nice with each other. You know, synergies. We were a little full, so I decided to just jump cut back to town. Just to cut down uh, the absolute nothing that happens in this game. Literally, uh, I had to cut out uh, about an hour's worth of uh, walking back and forth with nothing happening. In episode one. So, let's see here. We can sell some things, get them out of our inventory. So, yep, let's sell some of the stuff here. But I grabbed uh, some metal swords. Thing is, uh, metal swords actually get you less money than wooden clubs. Uh, probably because of uh, shitty metal is still shitty metal. Even if you melt down and uh, start over. So, yep, we're going to sell all this uh, wood, including my old staff. And all of these uh, clubs and cudgels. <clears throat> and... Let's go save the game and uh, go back out there. Now, yep. I already saved the game. Oh, that sell some of the extra herbs here. And there we go. Still have medicine. Lock picks. Yeah, I kind of wish there was a way you can rotate an item. Uh, to make uh, the item Tetris uh, feel a little more solid. But that's a, a gripe I have with uh, every game that has the item Tetris system. 
And they don't allow you to rotate. But I guess the reason is uh, balancing reasons. You know, you can't, uh, you could put the ham uh, vertical in your uh, knapsack, but it wouldn't be able to stay that way the entire time. That it might actually ruin the ham over a period, so storing it on its side. Uh, the side which uh, it sat when it smoked is actually the best way to store the ham. So I guess, you know, little tidbits of uh, overthinking exist. So we're going to buy a ham. A ham is $150. So. Yeah, uh, forest food is not worth it. Besides the little berries here and there. Uh, because they don't fill you up. Meat is the important. The meat fills you up in this game. And not just meat, but fat. An interesting thing is the human body actually needs a regular intake of fat a day so that it can actually break down meat. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, the body can't break down meat without fat. And it's kind of a lucky thing that everything that has meat has a good deal of fat. So let's uh, put this stuff uh, here. Oh, so that is my chest, by the way. So, I stole items from myself. Episode 1. Let's sleep. And let's go back out there. After a routine break. Alrighty. Yeah, that dungeon is a uh, tier two. We might be able to do it next episode after I get to a total of six levels. I want to play it over cautious when it comes to. Uh, Dungeons. When I uh, routinely feel like I win against bandits to such of a degree that it's no longer interesting for me to uh, kill bandits all day. That and uh, I kind of want strategic options available. Like stone skin. Arena of Fire, and a couple of melee skills as well.
Let's talk to the old man here. Oh, a free ring. Neat. And it's better than the one I have. But I'm not going to take the one off I have. The one I have off. Because I still have an empty ring slot. And I kind of feel that uh, they might need to change the UI a little. So that it automatically uh, tells you. You know, compares your worst ring with the one you, you ho uh, hover it. Hope, uh, hover over or if it's a better ring of an existing one you know it has pretty much all the same stat rolls as this ring but it's a higher base you know little nitpicks here and there but hey uh, it's a game that's not even done being made yet it's actually pretty solid at the moment until most likely uh, we find the city of gold and wonder why it's a ghost town. Well, it's because they haven't uh, gotten all the quests associated with it uh, put into the game yet. So it's in the game, but it's not ready yet, to my knowledge. But this, uh, this Let's Play is in the City of Gold update packet. So, we're going to need to eat and uh, get some water. Oh, so, uh, I don't know what happened to all the wildlife, uh, they used to be overly abundant, I, and I remember getting mauled by it a couple of times in the previous episode, but I haven't seen any wildlife since that episode. Yep. Those roasted mushrooms did jack sh diddly. Eat the ham. And let's continue on. You know, I wonder if they're ever going to put in a necromancer class. Or a summer class. And, you know, have it be like a, a, a super special, you know, secret thing. You can't start the game off as it. Uh, just have it uh, have books hidden in the game and they randomly spawn. And unlocks the. Uh, a secret uh, passive uh, passive tree to allow you summon things. You know, in every fantasy RPG game, uh, there's always well. Uh, let's go with the D and D uh, thing. Uh, a lot of their summoning abilities are the druid summoning abilities, which allows them to summon fae and uh, animals. The necromancer, obviously undead. We all know his stick, he needs a corpse. Corpse is alive, now it can fight. Then you have the elementalist which can summon 
effigies built from elements. Then you have your classic demon summoners. And then your... And then your, uh... Oh, and then your construct maker. That's the one. You know, build robots or golems, you know, constructs. I kind of want to see if they ever do that uh, in this game. Because that would actually be pretty interesting. Because there isn't a lot of survival RPGs like this one. Uh, to begin with, uh, unless you want to go back to the old games. Uh, there's this YouTube call, uh, YouTube channel called Accursed Farms. He, uh, he tries to, I mean, he tries to find some of the most obscure video games in, uh, the history of video games, and, uh, he plays them to try and actually get to the ending of the video game to catalog what happens if there is no video representation or no one knows at all. But, uh, there's this one game that he played, which was literally absolute cancer. And, uh, it was a Diablo-like RPG, right? But, It's uh, built as a chaotic, archaic, draconian action game that's also slightly randomly generated, so enemies are in the same spot every time. But the same amount of enemies will spawn in each area. literally two screens in in the game, they pretty much give you a instant kill boss enemy, which in later levels they just throw at you like a regular enemy, you know, just packs. And what I mean later in the game, oh, here's the bandit can. Finally found it! Come on, come on! Eat fire! We're going to reduce damage because of the rain, and, uh, they have wet clothing. Obviously, they're going to take less fire damage if their entire gear is soaked in water. It also means that uh, we're going to get hyperthermia if it gets cold. That also means, uh, ice does more damage in rain. It's 
so yeah and uh, literally two of the classes you can dig from in that game are actually uh, quick bit option. You can't actually beat the game with two of the characters in the game. And that is Wizard and uh, Barbarian, I mean, uh, Melee. The spellcaster and the melee guy. The melee guy uh, can't do anything uh, because he needs to be able to tank enemy hits, but every enemy in this game practically can one shot you in the right conditions. Let's see here. Let's do uh, which one uh, has stone skin. I definitely know I'm going to get Hail of Blows next to uh, unlock the next passive in the staff tree. There we go. There's stone skin. And we're going to need a lot more uh, passive points. I plan this to be a melee spellcaster hybrid. Oh, I thought I got two points every level. I guess that's, uh, you only start with two points. recommend you look at his stuff. It's actually pretty interesting, uh, but uh, here lately uh, he has been uh, stepping back uh, from the Accursed Farm series. I know the Game Dungeon series. And uh, moving into video game politics. And how uh, people sell you a service and then they can pretty much take away the service at any point and not give you a single thing afterwards. Like uh, MMOs. Oh, a really good example is uh, Battleborn. I bought that game with, I got the entire game and characters unlocked on sale one day. Really wanted to play it. I couldn't find a single goddamn person who was playing the game. And it's a multiplayer game. And it's one of those match multiplayers. You need five people to play the game. No, you need 10 people to play the game. It, it was a first-person mode of, like, uh, Overwatch. But each uh, character actually had two separate tweets. 
to add a, a little bit of uh, complexity to the system as well as synergies with other players. And it was really well in depth. I actually liked the idea. When I I couldn't return the game, it still costed like thirty bucks for everything when it was on sale. And the reason why it was on sale was because uh, it was the last last ditch effort uh, to get people to buy the game. Eventually, not enough people bought the game, so. Uh, it went free to play, and still no one, no one's uh, wanting to play. It. But essentially, it's Overwatch, but each character has customizable abilities you can uh, unlock. Uh, you know. It has its own little passive tree, uh, akin to uh, XCOM's passive tree, where uh, each one has uh, two branches, and you can pick which either one you want. And the synergies it has with other members in your team. But, yeah, uh, that's uh, $30 I will never see again. Well, I didn't even get to play the game. There's a single player mode, but the single player mode is literally a story intertwined with a tutorial on every character in the video game. So, if you can't play with people, then there's no point in learning how you can play each character in this multiplayer game to get better at playing each character. There is the story, but the story is uh, pretty cut and dry. Oh, it, uh, it, in my opinion, it has one of the best opening cinematics in video game history. And hell, uh, just tell you how good it is. Uh, if I didn't know it was actually a cutscene from a video game, I would have thought that it would have been uh, a uh, video game. I know uh, an anime of some type, at least a Western anime at most. You know, an animated series. Two more bandits. Bandits uh, tend to come in pairs, apparently. I have rarely seen more than two bandits, period. I've also learned you don't want to move diagonal uh, too much. Unless the enemies start going diagonal. Let's get in our cocoon. There we go. And let's chase that uh, that uh, cowardly bastard who has to be French. Really? Did I just make a that joke? I just sneezed on him and he died. I guess that's why he was running.
But, uh, yeah, stone skin, uh, apparently explodes. When it goes, uh, when it times out. That's actually pretty potent. Let's go ahead and take these cleavers back. But, yeah, I can uh, play Battleborn at any point, but uh, it pretty much died the day I bought it. Oh, there was only one other person who play who was playing the game. But I can't even believe uh, Valve actually allowed them to sell the package like that. The game... The game was beyond dead. Uh... But, uh, the, uh, MMOs... Those games... I mean, every MMO, uh, he pretty much, uh, goes on into, uh, here lately pretty much talks about how every MMO is actually attached to a ticking time bomb. And after a while, it will actually self-destruct. And uh, no matter what you do, it's a service, not a product. But... It's both. Yeah, you buy a video game. You're buying a product, not a service. When it comes to single player games, but MMOs, those are a service. Let's go over here. We're also doing a little bit of exploration on our way back. There we go. Oh, bandits. Well, let's flame them. I'm hungies. Kill him. And we're going to get into melee here soon. Hold up, you don't run. Why why did he just start running away before uh, he got I, I only hit him twice, and he started to run. The enemies have mor Oh, I guess they do have a morale system. Let's go kill this bandit. No, he was half dead before I attacked him, which means they most likely uh, fought someone else who came through here.
Let's take the more valuable items here. Cudgels are uh, pretty worthless. I have a lot of battle, uh, battle cleavers uh, for the blacksmith for that quest. Oh, I also have uh, a king's bust. But yeah, uh. All right, any more bandits? I kind of wasn't expecting there to be bandits here because I cleared all the bandits out yesterday, you know, in last episode. But it looks like they have some uh, pretty quick respawn rates. Oh, we haven't seen a single damn wolf. Where are, uh, where are they? This entire episode, we only have been seeing bandits, and that's it. Nothing else. That's saying something because... Uh, I plan to make this episode two hours, and we're literally midway in the halfway mark, and we haven't seen any uh, wolves. We've seen foxes, I mean, I think I've seen a fox or two, but I can't get the meat off of them because they run away before I kill them. Let's see if I can do some item Tetris. Let's rest up. And we're going to go to bed and sell the stuff in the morning. Let's cook uh, the random stuff we picked up. Nope. Didn't pick anything up. Oh yeah, that's because uh, mushrooms are worthless for food. Might be useful to use some of the fly aggies. Yep, they're closed. But I came out here for the well. Alrighty, let's go to sleep. Come here, little baby.
Do you like your little turtleneck? You're getting big. Let's see here. Alrighty, we're going to go sell stuff. I did pick up some horns from the bandit camp. And we're going to sell them to, uh, I believe, the tailor. Because he takes Hunter's paraphernalia. Thank you. I've just noticed this. None of the vendors have money bags. Let's go to the wood carver. And sell this wooden stuff. Wooden cudgels are uh, shit at the moment. and sell them the bowl. Let's buy a new ointment, because I think I used... Oh no, uh... Nope, I did not use any of my ointments. Alrighty, uh, <clears throat> hmm. I'm, I also have a quest to look for rum for the homeless man. Let's go ahead and sell the bartender the bust. You can sit it on this bar. It'll look nice.
You wanna buy those? Those are those that look nice on the wall. Oh well, I'm going by your ham. I also have an emergency ham, just in case I uh, go out for more than two days. So far from what I've seen a, a ham last two days. Are you a sleepy baby? For those of you at home who uh, don't know, I have a little fur baby in my lap right now. Its name is Duke. And he's wearing a little turtleneck. Alrighty. May have heard him in episode one barking around. Playing with the bigger dog. Let's go ahead and sell the antlers to you. Oh, so we're going to repair our gear. And let's head out. Let's go uh, kill some more bandits. Get prepped and uh, ready for next episode. We're going to go south this time. to re repair that. By the way, I don't know in real life if he can actually repair an old wooden weapon. You know, uh, mostly because the more you use it, the more stress fractures and micro cracks occur in the piece of wood. So if you keep using, I know, uh, hitting things hard with it constantly, eventually uh, the fibers of the wood are going to split along those cracks and micro fractures throughout the entire piece. Taylor wouldn't take him, so uh, Woodcarver apparently does, because he also has hunting paraphernalia.
Come on, bandit. skin. There we go. Let's go and melee range for this guy. Let's continue along the path. Pitchfork, that's a new item I haven't seen yet. That guy must have been a bandit turn uh, a farmer turned bandit. Let's uh, eat uh, the ham. Let's continue along. Let's pick some berries. Road snacks, as I like to call them. And they're ready to eat, too. They heal about the same as... Uh, Cooked mushrooms do as well, but uh, they give uh, more water.
item Tetris again. There we go. Halbor. Uh, we got a halberd. heal up a little bit. Because we actually did get uh, wounded. Cudgels are... Uh, Worthless compared to uh, peasant flails. And I'm just verifying that. How come flails are very common? amongst bandits. Just about rolled off. There you go. Alrighty, let's see here. There is a point of interest there on the map. Which means there's most likely a road leading to it. Like that dungeon. Fox. Well, I found a fox. Bandits again. last couple of bandits.
Let's go ahead and uh, initiate melee. Especially with the pitchfork guy because he's technically a spear. More bandits. Oh, three bandits. There we go. And there we go. Chase the little French guy. Be careful because we hear a bear. Alrighty. Back at uh, the town here. Going to sell the stuff we pillaged off the bandits. Alrighty, let's go ahead and sell nothing. Alrighty, let's go save the game. You know, this game uh, has one of those difficulty curves where at one point the game is really difficult, but when you have a handle on things, uh, it's monetively intuitive. Yeah, I got put in the corner by all the NPCs coming into the tavern when I wanted up. Let's cook all this before I go. Eat the raspberry. Let's eat all these mushrooms I picked up on the way. I'm trying not to depend on ham too much, but I'm not having any good luck with that. So I got some of the highest quality mushrooms to eat. And they still did nothing.
Let's eat that ham. Boy, I buy another ham before we go out. Let's go ahead and sell these uh, wooden clubs and uh, this peasant's pitchfork. sold at the blacksmith. Just bumped my uh, desk there. Leeches. I don't remember seeing that item before. Let's go eastward. Again. tired of just killing bandits. Did I accidentally kill all the breeding pairs in the entire area in the first episode? So the bandits took over because the wolves no longer were here? There we go. That's stone cocoon explode. 
There we go. Oh, and by the way, uh, I haven't looked up any of the abilities. I've just been reading what the abilities do uh, in game. Yeah, let's go ahead and wear those. A copper chain necklace. Better than no necklace. I forgot I was supposed to be following the road here. So that's if I could find the road. Come on. Bandits. No, is it me or is the game getting easier? I guess it kind of is getting easier. But that's because, you know, I'm used to, uh, the last RPG I played uh, was uh, one of the, I mean, Fallout New Vegas. And uh, how it works is, as you level up, so do the enemies, so... They're always getting as good as you are. Same thing with Fallout and Fallout, uh, the Fallout MMO. Yeah, I... I've been playing a bit of that off uh, screen. I'm still collecting enough to make a an episode two of that. That and I'm also trying to find the time to play it. Because there really isn't any main quest lines or story in that game. It's literally just explore and explore the same area multiple times to collect resources to make you better than you were before. And the thing is, I don't play an MMO for just plain grind. I kind of want to play a game that is good and have it stay good. Uh, you know, level 100 characters are really fun to play, but if your end game is good, but you're getting to that is bad then you're not, it's not a, that good of a game. Think about it. If it's not fun getting to end game, then what are you doing? It's a die, I know, every video game has a player dichotomy. Not every video game will actually play you know, feel good to other people, but I'm one of those people that like games that 
challenge you with strategy over uh, just straight RPG mechanics. Uh, I'm more of a strategy nut. You know, I kind of want a game that makes me feel like I'm playing a game of chess, but have it be complicated, like this game. Same thing with XCOM, or, uh, I forget its name, uh, fi uh, Fire Emblem? Games where your actions have long-term causes. XCOM 2, if you fail a mission, well, uh, things are just going to get uh, shitty. Just to simplify it, yes. That's literally uh, the game with XCOM. Uh, you make a bad choice, and then you get curb stomped. Bad. Uh, oh! Oh, uh, you were ordered to do this mission in order to catch a active alien UFO with aliens still on it before it attacks, to catch it, so you can take it apart, to make better, I mean, uh, better fighter jets to intercept the UFOs, because now we know how they're built and where their weaknesses are. <clears throat> uh, but you lose all of your expert people in that raid because uh, you know XCOM is all about time management and if you uh, fuck around too much in the beginning of the game either putting resources towards shit that you don't really need this very moment but will do so later, you need to Oh, uh XCOM's on sale this week and uh the next video uh might not be Stone Shard, it might actually be an XCOM game. Enemy within I plan to do the entire series, uh semi-blind, because let's be real. <coughs> I've actually played uh, XCOM uh, a couple of times before. I have it on PS3. But I don't feel like pulling out the PS3 at the moment. Back and they actually made some updates to balance the game to make it a little easier on PC for veteran players by uh, updating uh, a lot of the perks to not be as useless as they were originally were. For example, uh, the headshot uh, ability, which I'll this is an XCOM. We won't talk about XCOM for the moment. But, in my opinion, a good game... You know, different people have different opinions. A game that's either interesting mechanic-wise and how it's built, or a interesting idea that hasn't really been explored 
two really good examples kingdoms two and one but one is technically abandoned wear you could probably get it for free somewhere but you can't get it on Steam because no one technically owns it anymore but you can buy the sequel which is pretty much the same exact game but with a, a different story and uh, new abilities and the like. I actually plan to do a series uh, called Retro, Retro Quasar which is essentially looking at old games and uh, games that have built a genre unto themselves and look into the philosophy of that. And how this game is so unique, it's good. But that's a little bit of uh, channel stuff there. This capture card I'm using is really good uh, with what it does. Uh, if you noticed uh, a random jump earlier, uh, I'm actually pretty good with uh, seamless jumps, but you know, if you get it two frames off, uh, it doesn't look right. But I'm still a bit of a novice uh, at it. Let's go down here, follow the trail, and find uh, see if we find a new place. Okay. Bandit. Yeah, uh, that was probably one of the shittiest ambushes I've seen so far. Oh, I didn't even know I was being ambushed until my character said, oh, ambush. Five spaces away, I mean, literally, like 15 feet. After I passed the point, I backtracked and found him on the road. Cocoon. Dead. There isn't a second bandit with that guy. At least it's different than two bandits again. Why are there so many goddamn bandits this episode? Shouldn't really be complained because of all the XP they give, but any human enemy does that. Oh, I'm going to be able to get to level 4. I want to be level 5 before I do that dungeon. But... I will try to do it at level 4 if I die literally within the first 5 seconds of it next episode. Uh, we're going to try again at level 5 after some more bandit hunting, I guess. But I would uh, rather to have found a uh, tier 1 dungeon instead of a tier 2. 
because I don't know how difficult dungeons are in this game uh, outside of the tutorial. By the way, the tutorial for this game is hardcore. Uh, it's literally one of the most brutal tutorials I have ever seen in a video game. Oh, most players uh, don't actually beat the tutorial. Hell, it's a fucking achievement. It's actually a secret achievement, if I remember correct, if they changed it or not. <clears throat> I guess, uh, well, I found a homestead. Let's talk to them, see if they have anything to say. Nope, not really. Oh, why did he spill your food, baby? really have much to say. I do know someone told me about a terrible feast uh, where that question mark lives at. But that may not be something for some time because if memory serves correct i also been reading some of the patch notes. Uh, one of the, uh, the update before this one, or at least one of them, was the Troll Slayer update, which adds uh, a series of quests completely based around the idea, oh, there's this big spooky monster over there. Yeah, stay away from there, it's pretty dangerous. And then you go over there and kill it. That's the quest. Alrighty. Two more bandits again. Oh, I think they're, they've been getting easier, and that's Probably because I have more options. I'm going to want a, a melee ability. Uh, to go along with the spell uh, combo I have at the moment. There we go. Well, I'm going to go back to town after I eat and rest for a bit. Let's eat that ham, that good old ham. And let's continue on our merry way. Come on. Let's get a rolling. I'm literally very close to leveling up again. So I'm going to risk it. 
because uh, we're having to travel very far to find more bandits. Which is a sign that we're probably killing too many bandits. Or at the very least, uh, it's a sign that we're going to have to hunt animals more, but uh, I haven't seen a single animal this episode. Unless they make an update to make them more Alrighty. <clears throat> Here we go. Don't know why there's so fucking many bandits in this episode. Oh, uh, I might say too many bandits. Yeah, it's starting to look like there's too many bandits this episode. <clears throat> Let's get them. Same strategic bullshit I've been doing this entire episode. Cocoon, melee, Explode. Got him. Homemade swords are pretty crap. Going to get as <coughs> much gold off the blacksmith as I would a wooden cudgel with the woodsmith. Alrighty, uh, let's uh, chase down this last dude. Another bandit group. Alrighty, I'm going to deal with you then. Stone, cocoon, melee, level up. And we're going to go with flurry of blows. And then... Let's go. And, uh, let's see here. If we want that, we're going to need to put a lot more points in those. So... We're going to need uh, five more strength, five more vitality, and five more intelligence. So let's pick one of those three, and uh, and hell, uh, and then we should be good. Killed another bandit. Oh, come back here. You're not getting away from daddy there. There you go. He's in a coma now. Oh no, I'm wrong. He's ten feet under. How could I get those two mixed up? 
Alrighty, back at uh, town. We're going to sell all this stuff and uh, go to bed. Save the game and uh, see you guys next time and all that. But after we sell this stuff. And like I said, uh, the next video I might make is going to be XCOM, uh, part of an XCOM LP. I plan to do the entire series. Because apparently, uh, 3 is coming out soon. And, uh, well, the thing is, I'm one of those people that has a, have a bucket list of games that they, uh, that I want to play for both myself and YouTube. You know, I'm just, uh, recording it, uh, and commentating over it, uh, for the fun of it, because, you know, uh, with single-player games like this, uh, it's not as rewarding uh, to uh, keep keep all your experience to yourself. So you know what I mean. Uh, it's more rewarding to actually be part of the community in some way by tossing out uh, an LP or something. And uh, I plan to use uh, these episodes as a footage bank for... Uh, that series I mentioned, uh, Retro Quasar. And whenever I beat a game, uh, I'll make one. Uh, but for indie games, I won't make a, a Retro Quasar until they're done, as in complete games. Because I want to get some old ones in there, too. Alrighty. We repaired all of that shit there. Made it better. So now we can, uh... Oh, it fell. Nah. The only thing a belt does is keep your pants up, which uh, reduces your uh, fumble chance. So, yeah, that's what the belt does. It just reduces your chance to uh, fuck up uh, in melee combat and in magic combat. So, if you don't have a belt, uh, about half of uh, those fumbles are actually your pants falling down. Which is actually pretty humorous until it happens to you. Because uh, you you don't want to get fucked over by your pants falling down. That's why we have belts, people. But, hey, uh, that's a, a rambly rant for another day. And it's about time to say good night and uh, see you guys later. Uh, see you next time and all that. Uh, please uh, like uh, and subscribe. I forgot to do that in episode one. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. After this little snoozy snooze.